what is going on guys redox here and the last video we made was a tip on how tips on how to become better at youtube and well i didn't cover any tips and it was just what you needed to buy so as a follow up for that video today we're going to look at what you need to do to get the best out of the things that you've just uh, bought so uh yeah I, i have my green screen set up again i'm totally up and running so there's going to be weekly uploads every sunday or one day might get delayed and i will be informing you guys through the comments thing whether i'm going to upload or not so yeah let's just get on with the video let's roll the intro I guess that's enough time. So the first thing is you bought the camera. So well, you have to get the best out of it. So if you give a professional a smartphone, and then you give like a one D X Mark to to some kind of person, layman like me, they won't. The smartphone video will look miles better than the one D X Mark Two, even though the one D X Mark Two is a better camera. I mean, if you give an Arri Alexa or like a Red Weapon. the one of these smartphone is going to look better because it was it was shot better it doesn't always depend on they say i, I, I don't know why what they say it's uh, is what cars but let's just apply this to also the, the car doesn't matter the driver does so if you have a really good camera which has a lot of overhead but you don't know how to use it properly you're not going to attain obtain to its uh, use it to its full potential but if you even have a really really bad camera but you can push it to its maximum limit is going to be definitely better so one of the first thing you have to do is look at lighting but before we go into lighting we're going to look at the camera tips so right now let's look at rule of thirds a rule of thirds is a 3 by 3 grid that is applied onto a video feed you can do it on your smartphones i suggest you have a smartphone right so you can do that to your smartphones so what that will enable you is that There are three lines that have been drawn on to the thing, the viewfinder, which will show you uh, nine quadrants. So the lines, if you want a person, when if you want just want to show something for a split second, you have to keep okay. There's imagine three quadrants. You have to place it at the middle quadrant, like the second row and the second from the left. So like imagine like here is a quadrant. Let's just say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three to keep it here. So even if you show it for a split second, people are gonna lo- look at it and know. Wait, this is this. But that will not be cinematic. It will be flat, and people are not gonna think that's good. So they're gonna look at it, but they're not gonna think that is good framing. The good framing places are again take quadrant of this size. One, two, one, two. So there are four points where the lines intersect so at the, those points the, those points are the best points to place something so if, if you want to show something is happening on the left place your actor on the left and then show this left thing on the right side of the frame and have the la- actor look at the left at the, the right is vice versa at the top and bottom also the same those are cinematic framing positions which will definitely help to make your video look better look like hollywood movies they all use sort of thirds in fact but They don't use grids. They have the rule of the thing, the grid, memorized, so they know where it will be. And then they look at a viewfinder. So, and then you have to look at camera shape stabilization. You buy a gimbal. You just run around with it. No, you have to practice like ninja walking, where you walk on your heels rather than just walking. So. that the vibration from your foot is reduced so the gimbal doesn't have to spend a lot of time stabilizing this and you also have to practice other things when you're looking at steady cams like balancing and then should you should use your left hand and use your right hand for panning or tilting because you'll have more control on that but using your left hand will be right hander is going to be hard if you're left hander use right hand for the handle and use the left hand for tilting right hander use left hand and reach right hand for tilting it's the opposite side So those are some camera tips. These these are not for the professional ex- experienced people. These are just for people who are interested in making YouTube videos and want their videos to be better. 
so I'm not going to go in, in depth about it. If you want in depth camera framing uh, tips, con please consider subscribing. There's going to be a video about it soon, later in the year, not any time like soon, soon. So now let's look at mics. So in the last video, I had a lav mic. Let me just get that. So I had this mic. And uh, but now what am I doing without the mic? Uh, the audio still sounds almost similar. Well, what I'm doing is I also have this channel called Redox Gaming. Actually, uh, I also have because of that I also bought a PS4. And the PS4 it comes with a mono headset that is extremely bad for audio listening, but it has a kind of good microphone. The re and I'm using it right now. If you can see, it's like. Here, I'm using it right now. So I, st I still plugged it into my phone and supported it. It's like almost this, but it also has a headphone, but you can't monitor the audio through it. Headphone jack limitations. If using XLR, it's gonna be USB is gonna be better. So the headphone is also somewhere tucked in into my dress right now. I tried to hide it. So you can use that if you have that, or you, you can buy this. I'll provide the link in the description below, or just. We yeah, search up Amazon for a very cheap lavalier mic. These are generic lavalier mics and these are very, 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 very good. That's a lot of words, but this is very good and it sounds great. And those have come with a small foam filter, which filters out the air. And this is how it looks without the filter. But I always use it with the filter because it looks cooler. But be careful with these ports because see, mine is not that, uh, straight it's like a bit curved because i put it in my pocket and i use it in my phone so that's what this happens so i have to throw it carefully over there i don't want it to destroy it. yeah so don't for lavalier mics the one mic that i showed it was a unidirectional mic that is on the top is going to record most of the sounds it's going to pass sounds from the sides too but they're going to be of a little bit of lower volume so if you want to face if you want if you want not to show the mic you're gonna record on only until like your chest or something. You can place it right below the frame, and you can talk normally. And the top portion is much more sensitive to volume, so it's gonna record a bit louder. But what I do is, you have the shirt. If you're wearing t-shirt, there's the collar going around, right? You clip it on the here, so it will be facing that side. So it's closer to you, but the sensitive part is not facing you, so the sides don't record all that well. So the Volume will be lower effectively and you can place the mic close to you. So these are two tips for lavalier mics. Unfortunately, I don't have a shotgun mic, but I'm going to give you one tip that I, it's just common sense. Shotgun mics, even though they're, they, they are made to kick, be kept next to the camera, or it, the main reason is because you don't have to um, prep well before you make a shoot. As for this, when you do vlogs and like coverage, event coverage, don't want to be wearing, running around with this and you have to fiddle with the positions because you wanted to record your audio, your voice like extremely clearly. That's where shotgun mics come in. So there are two positions. One is placing it on top of the camera or using a boom pole or a C-stand to like, get, like keep it hanging. Okay, why do you want to keep it hanging? That's the main reason shotgun mic is not prep. Well, any type of mic will work well only if it's close to the sound source. If it's on the camera and the camera is like a million feet away or like you're walking around, you want a real estate job and you're like walking towards the camera, the sound volume uh, will be going from low, little bit lower, higher, high, higher, highest. So it's going to be quite a different change. That's, and movies don't want that because like action movies, they, the camera moves a lot, people run around. So you don't want the sounds to be gone. So that's why they have a boom pole and boom mic operator who runs behind it. So that's the reason. Place a boom ball, sound will really be better. Let's move on. This is video lighting. So yeah, I already went through this the last time, but why not? So uh, the uh, normal light setup has three lights, three point light setup. A key light, a fill light, a back light, and now there's four light, fourth light, practical light. But for a green screen, you only need two lights on both sides so you to cut off the shadows, that's it. But if you're shooting on with some with a background, not a green screen background, like literally a real life with depth, a 3D background, I would recommend three-point lighting setup. 
A key light is supposed to be placed at a 45 degree angle from the camera so that it eliminates one part of your face. A backlight is supposed to be kept exactly opposite, like diagonally towards the key light so that it will fill in. That's why it's called fill light. A backlight is used to give you depth from the background, like it is usually placed behind you so the background is lighted up a little bit lower. It should not be as bright as the key light. And the key light should be the brightest light. The fill light, if it is bright, you make the light reflect off of something so that it, it, the intensity gets lowered a bit. Then the background light has to be of the lowest intensity so it just illuminates the background. It doesn't highlight it so that there's depth to your image. The background isn't, isn't like completely gone black, dark. You don't want that. That's the main reason you are filming against the background. So, and if you want a little bit of a different thing, if you have a bookshelf or like something, some place where you can hide a light on, place like a smartphone or like a very small flashlight, cover it with diffusing paper if it's a flashlight, if, just use, if it's a smartphone, just use your smartphone, place some books, place a bookshelf, place some books, and then behind the books, keep the phone like this and then light it up. So there's going to be some source of other source of light in the background. But whatever you do, don't mix your video lighting with your home lighting because they're going to be of different temperatures and it's going to be a mess if you're using anything. Oh yeah, color temperatures. Use manual settings for your camera. Why? Well, auto settings are not always good even in smartphones. They're supposed to be used in auto settings, but they're not always as good as what they should be. Use manual settings. So now we are going to move on to the other part of lighting, hard or soft light. Hard lighting is basically when the light is extremely harsh, like right now, extremely harsh. So the shadows, if there are any, are gonna be extremely sharp, I'd say. So harsh lighting is definitely avoidable, soft lighting is f preferable, but if you are going for some kind of a different kind of a look, you can go for hard lighting. Soft lighting is always preferable. So if you just buy a goddamn light and then put a soft box on it or like put some diffusing paper, oil paper on top of it, so it's going to be diffused a bit so that it's not as hard, soft light. So yeah, the last video I made was 17 minutes long, but it doesn't have a lot of content in it. So I tried to make my videos as short as possible, ASAP, as short as possible. Tutorials on how to make your videos better individually, like looking at camera alone, looking at lighting alone, looking at audio alone, looking at green screen, chroma keying, background, and, and also looking at fun unboxings, fun reviews, really, really cool effects on a uh, hit film. Please consider subscribing to this channel. This is Redox, and this is my new style of videos, and boom, we have uploads every Sunday, maybe uh, scheduled for Monday, but I'll try to upload every Sunday. Please subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and this is Redox signing off.